This example is meant to really clarify what the difference is between the work done by a spring and the work done on the spring. So what I'm doing here in this process is I'm compressing the spring from its natural length all the way down to some maximum compression distance. And I didn't mean to give away the answer here. So I'm just going to erase that real quick. All right, we're given the spring constant for the spring, 100 newtons per meter, and the maximum force it takes to get it to that maximum compression. So at any moment in time, the spring is pushing on me just as hard as I'm pushing on the spring. So that force that I am exerting has to be equal to kx if the compression length is x. So let's go ahead and find that maximum compression. And it's going to be 25 newtons over 100 newtons per meter, which gives me 0.25 meters. And then we'll compute the work that we've done on the spring. So the work is going to be the integral because I have a variable force here. From the initial to final x position, f of x dot dx. Well, as this thing is compressing, dx is in exactly the same direction as f. So I don't have to worry about any angle in the dot product. I just get the product of the magnitudes. And I'm going to go from my initial x to my final x. And well, what's the magnitude of the force I'm exerting? It has to be equal to the magnitude of the force exerted by the spring. So it's just going to be a kx dx. And of course, if I integrate this, I get 1 half kx squared, just the classic formula for work done by a spring. But more specifically to our problem, I'm going to put in the 100. I'm going to integrate, and I get uh, 1 half kx squared, or a uh, 1 half x squared for the x part. The 1 half, I'll combine with the 100. When I plug in the lower limit, I get nothing. So all that matters is that upper limit. And when I do 50 times 0.25 squared, I get 3.125 joules. Okay, and again, I was pushing in the same direction as the displacement, so I expect to get a positive work. What about the work done by the spring? If I look at the force exerted by the spring through this whole process, it points opposite the direction of displacement. So I'll call that Fs, the spring force. But it's still equal to Kx in its magnitude. So if I set up my integral, Again, integral from x1 to x2, spring force as a function of x dotted into dx. Well, with these two pointing in opposite directions, that's an angle of 180, and I end up with a minus sign in my dot product. So integral from 0.25, or from 0 to 0.25 of negative kx dx. And there's no reason to do all this calculus again. It's the exact same integral with a minus sign in front. So I get negative 3.125 joules for the work done by the spring. So an important thing to notice here, because this is a really tricky point moving forward as we try to develop a theory of energy, I see the spring doing negative work and at the same time I see energy being stored in the spring. And this is true in general. Um, you could say the same thing for gravity. When gravity does negative negative work, you see the gravitational energy increasing.